The following podcast is an RMG Media production. Welcome to the Renaissance Podcast, a podcast for Renaissance women and men who want to create a modern day renaissance in their life and business. We interview some of the most successful entrepreneurs and share their unique stories. Are you ready to create your renaissance? We just roll into it. Roll it. I haven't done one in a while. It's been a while. We've had lots of guests. We took a one week break um, in September because we just got honestly just really, really busy. And Mm -hmm. then lots of travel. You went to. It was in Tahoe. That was pretty great. Um, You're going to the beach next week. And then I'm going to the beach next week. We're like going to be ships in the night. Yeah. (laughs) I'm going to be like passing, like I'm going to be leaving and you guys are going to be coming down. Yeah. It's funny. I didn't get the invite to uh, that trip. Yeah. Sometimes Walker doesn't get invited to our family vacations. (laughs) We had to book our own vacation, Bailey and I. That everyone listening is like, that's so sad. Yeah. But uh, you and Bailey, you guys like to go and We like to do things. (laughs) You guys don't do anything. (laughs) Well, you know, there's a difference going to the beach when you're in your 30s and 60s, like our parents, it's similar versus going in your 20s. There's a very big difference. Also adding a child to the mix. Yeah. You and I went to the beach together in June and you got a real taste of what it's like to vacation with a baby. Yeah, it was so (laughs) stupid. Plus it rained. (laughs) Plus it rained the whole week and then we were just dodging Uh, nap schedules. Yeah. Um, All right. So today we are going to talk about, I'm going to talk about, (laughs) you're going to just be here tips for content creation, specifically batch creating content. We hosted a class earlier this week uh, that was really fun. And we taught a group of social media content creators how we approach social media marketing and content creation. And that was one of my favorite things to talk about. Um, And I figured I would just share some of those insights today uh, with our listeners because everyone has a business or works for a business that needs to create content. And I think with some of these tips, you can be more efficient um, and learn to create better content faster or better. Like a more efficient way to create your social media content that doesn't lose quality because you're doing it in a more efficient way. It's just kind of how we do it to ensure quality, to ensure creative integrity, and to ensure that you aren't going into a content creation session without a good workflow, without a good prep work. Um, It's all about prep. Yeah, it really is. That's really the biggest thing. Like I don't expect anyone here that is not a videographer to become Spielberg. Like we're creating reels at the end of the day. Nothing has to be that crazy. And I think that gets in a lot of people's heads uh, of that, oh, my content's not good enough, or this is just kind of crap, or who really cares about this stuff? And the first thing that you have to do is get that mindset out out of anything in your way because it's just not going to help you. At the end of the day, you've got to create content for your business. You have to find what works for you. Um, And there is a little bit of a method that, uh, you know, the algorithm favors. Um, And depending on what world you're in, you can play to some of those strengths. Um, I'm going to use some different examples today, but I'm primarily going to be talking to, uh, you know, someone that is a solopreneur, um, like a realtor or uh, maybe someone in the law world where it's just a single person and they have to talk to their audience. Uh, I feel like that's probably what a lot of our listenership is. And I think that's going to be the most applicable. And I think this will be the most helpful to those people. So the biggest thing is get all that bull crap out of your mind of I'm not going to create anything good enough. It took me a long time to create good videos and I'm constantly learning. So shift your mindset. Nothing's going to be perfect right off the bat, uh, but you always have to be willing to learn. So number one, be willing to learn and be willing to try to create content. Don't just start filming one video and say, oh, this sucks. I'm not doing this. Or, oh, this is so embarrassing. I'm not doing it. And then just stop because you're going to fail that way. You're not going to do anything. You won't achieve anything if you do it that way. So step one, change your mindset and just start doing it. Step two, Uh, or tip number two, I tell this to my team, I tell this to myself, I tell this to everyone that I talk to, uh, you have to always be inspired. You cannot 
think that what you're doing works or you know everything. Uh, you have to be willing to learn. And when I say inspired, I don't want you to just take what someone else in your industry is doing well and recreate that because that's never going to be enough because then you're just creating a carbon copy of that person and that's not who you are. You're your own person. People work with you because of who you are and what your business represents. So you can't say, oh, just because, you know, Sarah does her videos this way, I'm going to do my videos that way too. It's just not going to work. If Sarah sets up her videos in her office and she's filming head on and she talks to people in a direct way, it doesn't mean that's exactly how you talk to people. You maybe have a different cadence or you have, uh, you know, you talk to your clients in a, in a different way than how that Sarah person would. So play to your strengths. Be inspired by what they do. You may say, you may see that, oh, okay, well, Sarah's talking head videos get 10,000 views each. That's incredible. I want to get 10,000 views each. Well, maybe it's the way that she's doing talking head videos. I've never done a talking head video. I've only ever done B-roll clips of, uh, you know, my office space. That's not really working, but I like what she's doing with that. And maybe I should do that. My clients always say, I love talk. I love working with you because you talk to us like you know what we really need. Well, okay, let's use that as inspo for a video. So always be inspired. Don't keep it industry specific. I like to keep I like to tell people to branch out and I do this a lot of the times as well when I'm creating like a product spec ad for uh you know a beer can. I get inspiration from a multitude of product videos that are not just beverage videos. Because if you look at only beverage videos, everything starts to bleed together a little bit. It's always like, okay, beer can pop, you know, the pop of the, tss, you know, you always get that. And then you're going to get pouring shots and you're going to get, you know, those types of things. But if you look at different products in different industries, like speakers or just like random things, you know, like always go to look at what Apple's doing with their iPhones. You can see how they're marketing and presenting their videos in really unique ways. And you can take some of those shots and ideas and implement those into a beverage video. So you're taking certain elements from different industries and applying those into your videos. So another place that I would look at is like, okay, I would see what's, if you're like a lawyer, what are some of the top psychologists doing on Instagram and TikTok? What is the type of content that works for them? Or let's look at like long form videos that are doing really well, like Insider or uh, like, Ver uh, what is it, Vanity Fair? Vanity Fair. They are always putting out great stuff or variety even, you know, like ask, you know, let's ask Pedro Pascal 20 questions. I always think those pieces of content are really great. And you may be thinking, well, that's Pedro Pascal. He's going to get a bunch of views anyway. He's awesome. It's an actor. You know that yeah, is. it went right over my head. That's a, a very, very famous actor. Um, and they do all those videos. It's like ask Taylor Swift 20 questions. You may be thinking, how is that relative to what I'm doing in my super local uh, law practice or, you know, my real, my realty firm, whatever. How is that relevant? Well, it's relevant because clearly people enjoy that format of content. They enjoy seeing someone answer questions that they're curious about. I'm curious what Taylor Swift eats for breakfast because it's Taylor Swift and she doesn't seem like a human, but there's something about hearing someone talk to you about something that goes on in their day to day or whatever. Now I'm not saying get on camera and start talking about what you eat for breakfast. I don't really find that fascinating. What I think would be fascinating is you talking to the camera, like you're talking to me as a client, telling me about your industry, telling me about things that I would probably have questions. And I'm 20, I'm about to be 26. I don't know what it's like to buy a house. I haven't bought a house. I'm in Franklin. So it's very like, I can't afford anything there, but tell me how I could afford a house. What steps do I even need to take? How can I get approved for a loan? If I don't have a down payment, do I really need a down payment? Ask and answer those questions. There's millions of questions that you can answer. Well, and people are more curious beings than we 
kind of know as social media people or business owners. Um, don't just assume everything you have to say is boring. I think if you work with a brilliant videographer like Walker, he's naturally going to pull the, the more interesting elements and what he knows is actually going to um, garner a view than, than anything else. But people are curious beings. And um, yeah, it's it's about playing to it and and really just like consuming content that can inspire you. Um, and also, you know, when it comes to being the business owner, it's so important to use video to show your thought leadership. There's no better way than to show the influence that you have in your industry or in your niche than to be on video. So if we, we encourage all of our clients to maybe if the business owner doesn't want to be the person on video, we're like, is there someone that could kind of come out as being the face of the business because we know that is what works? Exactly. So tip one, change your mindset, get on camera. Don't be afraid to record yourself. You have to do it. Um, tip number two, always be inspired and go beyond just your industry. Um, tip number three, write out your shot list. I'd say this is the most important thing, whether you're filming yourself or you have someone coming in to film you, whether you're on an iPhone, behind a camera, whatever it may be, um, you have to have a shot list because you have to have intention behind what you're creating. And I see a lot of people fail at this um, and it really hurts the outcome of your videos. I see a lot of videos get scrapped because of this because you don't feel prepared. Your subject doesn't feel prepared. No one really feels prepared. So then everything just goes to crap. It goes to hell. So write out your shot list. So what I do with this, I mean, if you're filming iPhone stuff where a lot of people are filming head on talking head videos with their iPhone just to post on social media, that's great. Have a little tripod, whatever. When you're writing out your shot list, instead of being like, oh, angle one, I need it from my left side and angle two, whatever. I don't really care about that. I don't think that's really the most important thing. What I want you guys to focus on with writing a shot list is write out your video subjects. So we know that we want to make, pick a number. Say I'm my goal for this shoot is that I want to make 10 videos. Okay, great. What you want to do is you want to make sure that you're not making 10 of the same exact videos because you want to have variety if we're talking batch creating content. Like if I was going to make a content calendar for next month, I wouldn't want to have 10 of the same back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back episode or uh, videos. I want them to be a little bit different just because I know that's going to help engagement. Um, but you know what? It may serve your strategy to have 10 of the same type of video. It doesn't really matter. Just make sure that the subject matter is different enough so it doesn't bleed together. And wear different outfits. Bring different outfits. Yep. That's really important. Definitely have different outfits. Um, so then go and write out your tense. You say 10 videos. Okay, great. Here's what we're going to do. So we're going to do a 30-second video about buying a foreclosure property. Okay, boom. That's number one. Number two, how to get approved for a mortgage. Boom. Number three, I want this to be a B-roll video of a really cool kitchen that I'm trying or that's a part of this house that I'm trying to sell. There's three different ideas. Keep going down the list until you have, you know, your 10 that you want to uh, post throughout the month. Um, then I want you to include reference links. And this ties back into tip number two of being inspired. If you see a video while you're scrolling and you're like, ooh, this is really good, save that link and then add it to your shot list. We use just a Google Doc. It doesn't have to be crazy. You know, I've talked a lot about uh, analysis paralysis and just being like, what does a shot list need to look like? Just write it all out in a Google Doc, your notes doc. It doesn't have to be this super crazy thing. That's how I write my shot list. I mean, we're talking videos that we've charged a lot of money for where it's just a simple Google Doc or even in my notes doc. It doesn't have to be this massive storyboard that, uh, you know, Spielberg would put together for Jurassic Park. It just doesn't have to be that complicated. Um, all right. So once you have those out, include your reference links so you can have a visual roadmap of what it is that you're trying to achieve with that video. Um, if you like someone's talking head, you can say like, oh, okay, they kind of use this little like off kilter angle here. That's really nice. I like that. I'm going to try that. Or let's just do straight on. Or they had some B-roll, whatever it is. Or I really like the music here. And they're, uh, I like how they were upbeat. I liked their cadence when they were speaking. I can use that as a reference when I'm going into my video. Um, have multiple outfits. Like Sydney said, that's big. If you're writing, if you're doing 10 videos, um, 
you're definitely going to want to change. I would say, you know, two to three outfits, just a shirt, a jacket, something you can put on to just make it seem like you film these over the course of multiple days instead of in one day. We've done two or three episodes of our podcast in a day, and I'll typically go and throw on a Renaissance shirt or whatever. That way we're not going back to back in the uh, same outfits for any of you that watch our YouTube episodes. You may <laughs> notice that. Our yeah. few viewers on YouTube. <laughs> I know. Um, that's a big one. Uh, and that really is it for the shot list. I would say, personally, I don't really like writing scripts. I don't think people like scripts either. I think it becomes very overwhelming to an already overwhelming thing. So if you have someone filming your videos for you, uh, which sometimes I recommend if you have someone that you're very comfortable with that you can kind of just make it a fun thing to be like, ah, I know this is super awkward, but I'm going to be on video. I'm there with my friend or a content creator, someone that I know is going to just kind of laugh along with me as we get through this thing. Um, that can be helpful. But I would say instead of scripts, just write bullet points um, or questions that you would like to ask yourself. And then simply restate the question in the answer. That makes it a lot easier than having to remember exactly how you uh, how you have written, you know, here's how you get approved for a mortgage, da, 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 and you have your whole script. Say so you can do that if you have a teleprompter or if you're just naturally a person that can remember things. I don't do it. A lot of people I've interviewed are terrible at it, and it actually makes them jumble their words a lot more. So I would say bullet points or a question, so then you can simply ask yourself, what does it take to get approved for a mortgage in 2023? What it takes to get approved for a mortgage in 2023 is da 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 It's just a little bit easier. You already know the things. You already are a professional. You know exactly what you're talking about because you talk about it every single day to your clients, to your business partners, whoever, your family, whatever it is. You already talk to these people. You know more about this than anyone. So then just do it. Another tip for that, I would say, is when you're driving, if you drive alone a lot like I do, practice in your car. Like anytime you're alone or if you're putting the dishes away or if you're cleaning and you have some alone time, practice what you're going to say like to yourself because you're going to say it in the best way to yourself. And then as soon as Walker comes in with the camera, it, like sometimes even Walker films me, I'm like, ah, I like forget what I'm doing with my hands. I forget that I'm a human. I forget how to talk. There is something intimidating about a camera and a person being in front of you. But I do think the age old practice makes perfect. And if you can practice it, while you're driving to work, while you're on your way home, while you're in traffic, just keep saying it over and over and over again. It, your memory will kind of serve you in the moment. Yeah, it will. I think just, you know, you'll go through it a couple of times and you can you can cut things together. You can work a lot of magic in editing, which I will talk about here in a second. But yeah, just do it. Do it a bunch. Get a bunch of takes and uh, you'll eventually get very used to talking on camera. It does happen. It's, it's weird. It's a weird thing. Um, all right. So change your mindset, always be inspired, write out a shot list. Next thing, invest in lighting and audio. You, when you are marketing your business, a component of that is social media marketing and that is content creation. You're making a commitment to create content for you and your business so you can market your business, so you can reach more people and, you know, eventually get more customers. If you're going to go ahead and do all of that, you've taken all the steps to create your business, put together a marketing plan, start marketing it, make the commitment to invest in proper lighting and audio. You don't need to buy a $4,000 camera. You've got a very good camera on your phone. And I tell that to my team all of the time that we don't always need to loop in myself or Hannah for photo and video shoots because these are really great. And I've filmed a lot of videos on iPhones. They're really, really good. This is a light for those watching. Uh, and maybe this will be a clip we pull for social. Uh, it is, I think it was maybe $40 off Amazon. And it is a game changer. It makes you look good too. It will change how <laughs> your face looks. It will light up shadows and it will help you look a lot better. There's also really affordable ring lights that will completely change the game. And then audio doesn't have to be super complicated. These are two of my favorite pieces of equipment, lighting and audio. These are wireless mics 
wireless lapel mics, and they work with your iPhone. They're very easy. They were $120 on Amazon, and I use them for everything iPhone stuff, professional video stuff, anything. It really makes the biggest difference because you really want to have buttery, crispy, clear audio when you're talking to people, especially if you're talking about important topics. You don't want to hear your dog barking in the background. You don't want to hear kids running around and screaming. You don't want any distractions. All you want to hear is your vocals, sort of like how we're on this podcast. You just want to hear our vocals. You don't want to hear Maddie and Ashley up there talking about Jonas content Brothers. creations for or the Jonas Brothers <laughs> or whatever it is that they're talking about. You just want to hear us and our voices. And you can get a really, really nice sound quality out of these. They're Hollyland Tech. Uh, microphones, super easy. They literally plug right into the bottom of your iPhone in the charging port. And uh, then you can plug up not one, but two mics. So you can have one on me and one on Sydney, and we could just go and do a little mobile podcast if we wanted to. Super easy, and it's a complete game changer, and it's going to up-level your videos to level 10. So we could do a mobile podcast? I mean, we could. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Okay. That's good to know because a lot of the people that listen to our show have podcasts. So yeah. if you're on the go, I'm thinking of when we're at the summit, like rip a little podcast behind the scenes. Yeah. I mean, you could literally just film a 15 minute segment on your phone. Our iPhone shoot 4K now. It's pretty crazy. It's so really nice quality. And then, yeah, you could just cut it together, pull out a little sound clip. Like when Maddie does her little thing. Uh, this is what we just did for the PhD man on the street videos or one man on the street. Um, uh, Literally just had whoever holding this and tell me about this. No, no, no. You know? So really would easy. you recommend um, if you're filming with your phone and you're doing kind of like the long form video content, do you recommend turning your phone on do not disturb so that no calls come through? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because I think that's most people's phones should be on do not disturb no matter what. Yeah. Because it's just annoying Ugh. when phones go off. Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely turn your phone on do not disturb and just go to town, just start recording. And you said have a good tripod too. Yeah, tripod. Invest, I mean, make the investment. You can get a $40 light, a $30 tripod, and then audio is going to be the most expensive, but these things hold their value and I could sell these for the same price that I bought them for if I really needed to um, for like, you know, 120 bucks. So like under $400, $500. Oh, yeah. You're getting Under this. Under $200, really. So, okay, so yeah, but the, she, her math doesn't math. Brittany Campbell and I always talk about how we're both, it's the math thing, Ashley and I too. But um, that is so, like, that is so affordable. And the, yeah. these are really quality pieces that Walker's recommending that we use in our agency every day. Yeah, I use this all the time. I'm going to use this at a wedding this weekend that I'm filming, which I'm super excited about. Um it's going to be great. I mean, it's it's awesome. I've had this thing, this light specifically for two years, three years almost. And it's an incredible piece of kit. I don't even know the brand. It's not even that good of a light. Just it literally was like Amazon. $40. I just knew that I needed a pocket light and I use this all of the time. It's not the brightest, uh, you know, compared to some of these like external lights are our big studio light, but it gets the job done and it works really well. Um, all right. So that's it. Invest in your kit. You're already investing in knowing that you need to create content. So you may as well make good content. And the thing that's going to tear people apart, you know, they can get away. You can get away with not having great lighting. It doesn't People aren't going to really notice that. But if you have really crappy audio, they're going to notice that immediately. It's the number one thing. They'll stop watching your video because you sound cracky or there's a bunch of background noise. We can hear the 15 fans in your room because you're sweating because you're nervous about being on camera. Don't skimp out on the audio. Even if you get like a nice little shotgun mic, you know, that could work too. There's plenty of options. There's probably cheaper wireless lapel mic options on YouTube. I just recommend Hollyland Tech because it works really well. So I would take my word for it because I do a lot of video work and I'm not going to lead you astray. Um, all right, last thing. Before we have to wrap, I'm going to talk about uh, stock video. You can get stock video on Canva. Uh, you can get stock video on platforms like Motion Array, Artlist.io. Those are a little bit more expensive. I think Canva would be the most uh, affordable. Stock footage and B-roll in general are going to help your edit come together in a very cohesive way. Um, so pulling it up to our script you know, something that can be really engaging and can really help you help you 
uh, let's look at our shot list, not our script. So let's say how to get approved for a mortgage. When you're talking about this, it may you may have three or four clips that you're like, okay, I have these three or four clips and you know, I got the intro really good on the first one. And then I had a bunch of ums and a bunch of ands and a bunch of likes and a bunch of, you know, whatever filler words that weren't great. And then on the second one, I got halfway there, but I didn't get it all on the third clip. I had enough to tie it. I had enough to bring it home, but I don't know how to make them come together without a bunch of jump cuts or making it seem kind of laggy. That's where stock footage or B-roll will come into play. So let's say we're doing, uh, you know, how do you get approved for mortgage and you have three different clips Cut your video together so you have your intro, your middle piece, and your ending, and let it be, uh, you know, kind of jumpy. Let it look jumpy. Let it be whatever. What you're going to do is you're going to go to Canva. You're going to find some stock footage that may be relevant. Maybe it's stock footage. It doesn't need to be perfect, but it could be a banker in a bank counting money or whatever, or uh, a couple. You could literally go to Canva and type in couple in bank getting approved for loan. And it'll pull up that exact clip. And then you can take that and cut it in to the video. That's such a good tip. Over the split. So where you, let's say you get to the end of the clip and you're like, and here's what you need to do to get a mortgage in uh, 2023. You can cut that uh out, but then it's going to kind of skip a beat, slap that stock footage up there, and it's going to help blend everything together and give your video more substance and depth. And I might challenge our editor to... Do that Leave in some B roll with this clip because I think that would be an interesting way to tie it show all it. together to show it. Um, so yeah, that's really it. That's those are some seriously amazing tips that I was glad to sit in on this episode because I wanted to see um just I don't know the level that they were at because Walker can Walker can keep it 101, but he can also shoot really high to like 404 in terms of like what whatever level video video creator, content creator you are. But I think those were very applicable. They were um, easy for me to consume and understand. I am not the video expert here at Renaissance. I have good visual kind of vision, but I can't do it on the um, technical side or operational side. And Walker... Um, is super brilliant at that. And he's really working to guide Hannah on our team, who's a brilliant photographer and she's a um, up and coming videographer. And these were some great tips straight from the horse's mouth. Yeah. Giddy up. <laughs> and you're going to say that. Cool. Yeah. Well, thank you for those tips. And we will link some of these products that Walker um, mentioned in the show notes. So Walker, if you could send me those yeah. Amazon links. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for being here. If you have questions for Walker, um, feel free to send him a DM. What's your Instagram handle? RMG.Walker. RMG.Walker. Which when he's feeling spiteful, it's Robinson Marketing Group. Yep. Not Renaissance. Uh, if I ever leave, it's going to be real dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> All uh, right. Well, thanks for sharing your tips, Walk. All right. Bye. See you next time.